Um, good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm David. I've flown 8,400 miles from Singapore to San Francisco. And I'm happy to represent uh, Pandai, which I, a startup which I have co founded, uh, a tech startup that specializes in building uh, machine learning and conversa conversational AI solutions for enterprises. So, um, some of you might um, wonder what does Pandai actually mean? It is actually originated from a word in Malay language, Pandai, which carry the meaning smart. So we built a smart chatbot. So without further ado, let's start. Okay. Um, since I've came from a pretty far away, so please allow me to uh, introduce myself. So I'm David. I, the earlier part of my career has been focusing in research. So I was involved, involved in uh, Singapore MIT Alliance which we study um, urban, mo urban mo mobility data. So we study how people move around within the cities of Singapore. And this is for the, uh, to facilitate, for facilitate urban planning, group planning, transportation planning, etc. And later on, I was uh, involved in another research project, which we study social media data. So that was a collaboration with Carnegie Mellon University that we look at. Um, social media data from Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and etc. So later on, I joined the public sector. So as part of the uh, GovTech data science divisions, where we built machine learning models for public goods. And right now, I teach occasionally at uh, NUS, National University of Singapore, for topics such as machine learning and deep learning. And of course, right now, I'm running my own startup with my co-founder that we built um, conversational AI with uh, deep NLP. So the overview of my talk. So some of you might have noticed uh, I made some changes to my talk as I learned that the audience of the conference actually come, coming from like various backgrounds. For example, we have many software developers, data engineers, and of course, data scientists. So for this talk, I will cover mainly the uh, high-level overview of the conversational AI and not dive deep into the technical details. But of course, you are uh, feel free to approach me after the talk to, that I will, could point you guys to some of the reading materials or resources to learn more about the different techniques and etc. So as all of us have uh, noticed, there's a rising trend of mobile and messaging app usage. According to a research report by Flurry Analytics, the user's time spent in mobile um, messaging app have grew like 394% over the year. And if you compare to the average, which is, which is only like 69%. And in other re research, uh, done by BI Intelligence, the MAU demandly active users of the big four messaging apps include uh, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, uh, WeChat, Viber have, has already exceeded the usage of the big four social, um, social networks application, including uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Snapchat a few years back. So that led to a conclusion that the messaging, uh, messaging app has become part of our life and companies and enterprises, they are trying to be uh, where their customers are. And the simple answer to this is a chatbot or conversational AI. Because it is much cheaper to serve 1,000 simultaneous uh, customers with uh, machines than with a giant uh, human call center that is needed to serve that amount of customers. However, I'm not saying that um, conversational AI can replace human operator, at least not this moment, this stage. 
However, it can perform fairly well um, when the customer just want a quick answer. Where the alternative was to go through like 10 minutes of a menu on the phone or listen to 10 other options and press multiple buttons to continue. Okay, so um, before I continue, I will briefly talk about NLP, Natural uh, Language Processing, which I believe uh, most of you have uh, some idea about what is it about. Yeah. So to achieve a usable conversational AI, we, def we definitely need NLP and a good one. So in short, uh, NLP is a field uh, at the intersection of CS, computer science, AI, artificial intelligence, and linguistic. And the goal of NLP is pretty simple, is to allow the computers to process or sort of understand uh, human natural language that human use to converse in daily life. And NLP is to, is to allow them to understand and to perform some useful tasks. And could I have a raise of hand? Like how many of you uh, know the difference between uh, computational linguistic and NLP? Could I have a raise of hand? Like if you can differentiate between these two. Okay. So, um, okay, uh, computational linguistic is about coming up with computational methods to answer the scientific questions of uh, linguistic. So if, uh, and to compare uh, computational linguistic with NLP, so uh, a, a good analogy would be like uh, comparing like science versus engineering. So. Science is about studying the mathem mathematical properties to explain and understand um, a certain phenomenon, whereas the later engineering is about dev devising like, efficient ways to uh, solve a problem, so e efficient ways or techniques to solve a certain problems. So this is the difference between these two. And I mean, very often you came across like, a term called deep learning. It's actually deep learning based uh, natural language processing. In contrast, um, traditional or conventional NLP in the past, they usually involve handcrafted features, which is not scalable and efficient. So uh, sentiment, sentiment analysis is one of the good examples of application of NLP. Uh, however, I want to clear this uh, misconception among many uh, practitioners for, I mean, uh, when, they, when, they, when they come across like sentiment analysis, this is not just about um, classifying a document that is uh, positive, negative, or neutral in terms of the sentiments. So there are much more works uh, towards this uh, sentiment analysis problem, such as you can perform, uh, detect the sentiments towards the aspect of products. So you can also detect the sentiments of the reader, of the person who is reading that uh, passage instead of the writer. And of course, you can perform tasks to detect the sentiment at various levels of the text uh, granularities, like for example, from the term, sentence, up to the paragraph levels. Another example of application of NLP would be uh, Machine translations. Um, okay, it's okay. You, 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 if you don't understand uh, Mandarin or Chinese characters. So, um, are you able to tell which one of the translated text uh, is done by machines? So over here, I have uh, human translated version and machine translated versions. So you have uh, like 15, 15 minutes to take a look at three versions. Okay, uh, who, who think the, uh, the blue version is the machine translated? Can I have a raise of hand? Okay, how about the green one? Any, anyone think it's machine translated? How about the last one, the orange one? 
Okay. So the answer is okay. So the blue one is uh, definitely machine translated. Is uh, based on an approach called uh, phrase phrase based uh, machine translations, and I think most of people can identify that is translated by machines because of the, the use of uh, words and the sentence structure is a bit weird. The last one is done by humans, human translator. And surprisingly, the one in the middle is also done by uh, machines. It is um, based on the neural network approach by Google, GNMT. And f as for myself, I find it quite surprising because the Translated version done by the Google uh, Neural Network is quite natural to me. Okay, as you can tell, machine translation is one of the more matured field uh, in terms of NLP research. So we have been able to achieve like close to or even exceed like human performance in terms of uh, translations for certain languages. Of course not. All. Okay. So um, in case you came across uh, other terms like ASR, TTS, and a bunch of other terms, so this is a good uh, diagram that covers some of the terms. So it's from Stanford NLP Group. So basically, you can see, um, OK, ASR, automatic speech recognition, used to be under NLP, but now it's grown big enough that it became another domain. And within NLP, you have NLU, which means uh, natural language understanding. So it consists of uh, tasks or problems that is more challenging to solve. For example, um, dialogue agents, sentiment analysis, semantic parsing. Where NLP, you have some other tasks that has been pretty much quite established. For example, POS, part of speech tagging, uh, NER, name entity recognitions. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to uh, talk about the current state of conversational AI. Okay, I have this quote from Will Knight, who is the senior editor at MIT Technology Review. While Siri, Alexa, and the lights can follow simple spoken or typed commands and answer basic questions, they can't hold a conversation and have no real understanding of the words they use. I s agree with Bill on the observations of um, Siri and Alexa, and this statement is pretty much applicable to most of, uh, or many of the chatbots or virtual assistants up in the market. Um, uh, however, uh, recently Google has demonstrated uh, systems that seems to be capable of um, holding longer conversations beyond simply like two or three exchanges. Uh, later, we will talk about that in a moment. So um, in the past, which is actually uh, two years back, we have chatbot like this, which is, uh, which I would say like, uh, they are like glorified IVR systems. IVR means interactive voice response, yeah. And it doesn't handle much uh, natural language. So basically, they just provide buttons for you to click along. And you have another examples yeah, that couldn't really understand. So these kind of chatbots, they give bad names to chatbots. And they are bad to an extent that I felt the responsibility to censor their names so you couldn't identify what chatbot are those. So these are the good examples of how we shouldn't build our chatbot. So you, if you fast forward to 2018, so this is the chatbot we, oops. So this is the chatbot we pretty much seen on the, in the market right now. So, um, yeah, so the question is I don't have uh, I don't know what fund to invest in. So the chatbot answer, so this particular fund, if the user asks how is it, then the chatbot would have difficulty trying to um, capture the context. Then it just results in a, sorry, can, uh, 
can you rephrase your questions again? Because it sort of uh, loses the context of the users. So apparently, we are still quite uh, far behind, uh, far away from a perfect uh, conversational UX user experience. So we often encounter, like, can you rephrase, even if it's a valid question in this case. So to mitigate uh, this incapability of the chatbots, there are several approaches, such as uh, you have a human in the loop, or you have a guided storyboard to create a better conversational UX. But in this case, a human in the loop, so you have someone, a human operator behind to respond to the users. However, this defeats the purpose of having a scalable chatbot. So the, the funda fundamental issue here is that um, NLP is too difficult to solve right now with the current technology. And if you wonder why is it difficult, let me show you examples. So uh, can I ask if anyone has seen this sentence before? OK, so for those who have seen it, please don't spoil the fun. I mean, for the rest. So this is, uh, let's see. This is a grammatically correct sentence in American English. So anyone like to try to decode or decipher this sentence? What does this mean? And you have like 15 minutes to try. Okay, I still see many confused faces. It's fine, I mean, yeah. So let's give you some hints. So what, uh, yeah, eh, yeah, so I will talk about this term called homonyms. What is homonym? So in linguistics, homonyms are referring to words with identical pronunciations and, sp and or, or spelling, while they maintain a different meanings. So examples will be, Bear, bat, coal, bow. Yeah, and this is some of the homonyms. Actually, there are a lot of them in English. So I think some of you might figure out how to decode the sentence just now. So yeah, buffalo is a homonym. So it can be referring to the city of Buffalo, New York, as a noun. And that's another now, the animal buffalo. And the third meaning is a verb, mean, meaning to confuse or deceive. And in, in American English, in uh, Brit Britain English, is, it doesn't carry this meaning. Okay, so let's go back to the sentence just now. So there are three groups of buffalo. So we have buffalo one, buffalo two, and buffalo tree. So we have this group of buffalo who are bullied by the second group of buffalo. They bully the third group of buffalo. So, so is everyone on the same page now? Or? Well, you can, you can ask your neighbor if you couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Okay, well, some of you might think this is an outlier. We don't really encounter this like, in our daily life. It's, it's not, we don't speak like this, yeah. So, however, there are some other issues with the way we speak. So sometimes we like to um, speak or write in a very complex way, so in terms of the sentence structure. And there are ambiguities such as, I made her duck. So it could be, I, I cook her a duck cuisine, a duck dish, or I make her duck duck, or just, I'm a wizard that is capable of uh, casting a magic spell to turn uh, 
the, that lady into a dark. And very often, the meaning is context sensitive. For example, uh, if I ask how far is it, if I'm in, if I'm in Singapore, that will be referring to uh, kilometers, imperial unit. If I'm in US, that will be miles. And it depends on the day of time. If I ask, let's go eat. So am I referring to breakfast, or lunch, or dinner? And it also depends on the, the context, the prior sentence. So the third one, so which one am I referring to? So I need to provide the context in order to, like for example, for the model to figure it out. And of course, you need to recognize name entities, such as the name of persons, famous people, places, geographical uh, locations, and not to mention slang, jargon, humor, sarcasm, spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes, and abbreviations. So conclusion is, uh, NLP is hard to solve because language is imprecise. Okay, that lead to uh, another point which I'd like to talk about, which is uh, dialogue research. So if you follow the field of NLP closely, you might have noticed a substantial amount of uh, research effort has been put in or focused on uh, dialogue research. And what one might say that is due to the hype of chatbot or conversational AI or virtual assistants. But is that true? Uh, no, not really, because the research of dialogue agent has been around for quite many years ago. So um, the purpose of language is to accomplish communication goal. And solving a dialogue problem is a fundamental goal for NLP. This is, you know, so dialogue can be treated or seen as a single task, like learning how to talk, or it can be treated as a thousand of related tasks that require different kinds of skill sets, all using the same input and output. So example of dialogue would be, like, try to book a restaurant, chatting about sports, news, answering factual questions. So almost anything can be posed as a, a QA, a question answering problems. Then here I would like to briefly talk about this open source framework called Parley. It was, it is developed, released by Facebook, a Facebook AI research group. Um, so the vision of uh, Parley is to enable a systematic development and environment for development and evaluation of dialogue agents. So it helped to push, try to push the state of the art further and benefit the field as a whole. So uh, while it's not a technology breakthrough, it's definitely a great initiative to standardize the dialogue research. So as many of you might know that, I mean, many uh, NLP research effort has been in like silos. So they, they build particular models to focus on a certain subset of tasks or data. So uh, recently, okay, so when they first released Parley, it is, uh, there's a integration to Mecha Amazon Mechanical Turks. So it allowed easy um, collection of data. So you can deploy it on uh, Amazon and Mechanical Turks to gather um, Turks to collect data for you, to generate data for you. And most recently they have um, released it, I mean, to, they have built this integration with uh, Facebook Messenger. So there's a new channel that you can collect your data. And it support uh, multitask learning, which I will share a bit more in the next few slides. And it, it has already built in data for like, over 20 tasks. Okay, so here are some of the tasks. So overall, there are, main, uh, there are like seven main categories ranging from uh, QA, question answering, dialogue, uh, data sets, VQA, virtual question answering, sentence completions, dialogue chit chat, negotiations, uh, and machine translation. So the, the data set in blue color are the one that is added more recently. 
So if, if you can see there's uh, plenty of data set under QA, including the Stanford Q, QA data set squad, and also Wiki QA. So these are data set has been already labeled, so you get, can just uh, plug in your model and train it. So let's take a look at the one of the tasks, uh, BABI tasks. So there are around uh, 10 different tasks within it. So for example, from a simple one with a single supporting fact, like Mary went to the bathroom, John moved to the hallway, then another statement, Mary traveled to the office, then the question come in, where's Mary? Then in this case, the model need to navigate through the different statements and figure out Mary is at the office. Okay. okay, there are a few more more complicated tasks, I would say, including uh, argument relations, try to resolve it and like, try to handle simple negations and to handle like, indefinite knowledge. So to share a bit about the, what is the current state of the arts result on the BABI task. Okay, so this, is, um, this was released by a Stanford researcher back in last year. So they use a technique called dynamic memory tensor networks. So they, they are able to achieve pretty good result on some of the tasks, like 100% or 99 almost perfect score where they are, I mean, lagging off for certain tasks, like they only managed to score like 59% in terms of the accuracy. Another interesting uh, task we'll share about is uh, VQA, Visual Question Answering. So for example, given a photo and a question, the model is supposed to predict um, for example, what, in, this, in this case, what are they doing? And the model is able to f put the attention at the right place and realize that, oh, these two persons, they are texting. Another example is that what is he eating? Then you can you look at the heat map, then the model is able to figure out, oh, he's eating a hot dog. Okay, so just now I mentioned about uh, Amazon and Mechanical Turk. So this is there in the, since the first release. So um, no, no matter what you are working on, machine learning, deep learning, you need data to work on and high quality data. So as the, going, uh, as the saying goes, rubbish in and rubbish out. So an important part of Parley is this uh, seamless integration with uh, Mechanical Turk and Facebook Messenger that allow you to allow researcher to perform data collections, data training, and evaluation all in one single environment. So um, the human Turkers or the Facebook Messengers users are viewed as agents in the parallel environment. So you can achieve like person to person, person to bot, or bot multiple person and bot within the same group, and all can like. Uh, converse um, within the standard framework, then this uh, allow, like, uh, without any code change, you can switch the switch the role anytime within the environment. Okay, and now I'm going to share about uh, multitask learning (MTL). In case you are not aware, what is this? So in, in comparison, uh, conventional or conventions machine learning approach is usually optimized. When you build the model, you usually, usually optimize to a particular uh, single uh, evaluation metrics. For example, regression, you use uh, RMSE, or classification, you use AUC. So you train a single model, or in some case, an ensemble of models. Then you fine tune it, and you tweak the parameters when needed. So you do a like grid search to tweak the parameters to achieve a higher uh, accuracy. Whereas uh, multitask learning, uh, which, which also known as joint learning or uh, learning to learn, is a bit different. 
So it's designed to optimize for like, more than one loss functions, like multiple metrics. And it is be better because it improves uh, generalizations. So by leveraging the domain-specific information contained in the training signal of the related task. For example, I train this model for across like, multiple tasks. And this reduced the overfitting of model to that specific data set. And it encouraged the models to perform like what we call a task transfer. Uh, so Parley, uh, they have this built-in uh, features that allow you to perform like uh, MTL, multitask learning uh, easily within the framework itself. So the grand visions of Parley, which is just now I mentioned about the, the current research is like silos. So what they envision is to have this single environment to avoid silo research, identify, able, um, it, let the researcher to identify the model weaknesses and iterate faster. And we are moving forward to build models that can generalize well to many tasks. Okay, recent advancements. <clears throat> Okay, so this happened to be a research effort again from Facebook AI research group. So they are developing these AI agents to perform negotiations, which requires complex communication and reasoning skills. So uh, yeah. the animated GIF is actually capturing what the humans are negotiating. So on the left, you can see there are several items, like books, basketball, and hats. And with the same collection of items, uh, the value fu functions indicate how important is the item to the agents. So you just uh, try to negotiate. So uh, Facebook introduced this idea called a dialogue rollout. Basically, for a given uh, input text, there's, they come up with a candidate responses. Then they expand the responses from there, try to simulate the possible uh, combi combinations from there. So, I mean, dialogue route is not something new. It has been around in the game AI developments, but they came up with a way to optimize and reduce the comp comp computational resources needed. And the model they have trained they found it have exhibit some interesting behavior, such as uh, intelligent maneuvers. So at first, the, chatbot, uh, the bots will show like, interest in a uh, valueless item to the bot itself. So later, it like, sort of like, tried to please the opponent or compromise to give out that item in exchange to, of something that it really wants. So it is uh, an, in fact, an effective negotiation technique that human we use regularly. And this is not programmed by the researcher, so it learns through the observation of how humans negotiate. And yeah, this is the end result. You have the human and the bots ne ne negotiating for the items. Okay, so, uh, okay. so have anyone heard of, have not heard of Google to Blacks? Yeah, pretty much everyone has heard of it. So, so it's an AI system that uh, is capable to accomplish like, real-world tasks like booking a restaurant, uh, book appointment with salons, with uh, natural conversations. So while well, they didn't release the technical details, but um, basically they, they use a RNN as an underlying model. Then they take the input of the um, ASR, the speech-to-text information, together with the context, like whether the person is booking a haircut or a restaurant. And also, they took some features from the audio itself and feed it to the neural networks. Sorry? OK. OK. Um, do a quick wrap up. OK. So yeah, what, what we have learned as a Startup, we have launched a couple of chatbots with clients. Yeah. And some of the challenges we have faced, like compliance issue, when we work with enterprise clients, try to incorporate general intelligence and the answer generations parts. And 
I think guess okay. So in case you want to have like further readings regarding some of the technical details, here are some of the blogs that you would like to visit to learn more about LSTM, conversation agents. And lastly, um, we are hiring data scientists and software engineers. If you happen to like to relocate to Singapore, uh, feel free to talk to me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Big round of applause for David. Thank you.